um, let's go on to Ephesians 4 or 5. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Amen. Amen. Now, does this one baptism mean baptize one time? No. Amen. Got a Bible student here. It does not. One baptism means one mode of baptism. Not just one dip. And we're going to prove that in just a moment. One faith is the faith of Jesus. Re mentioned in Revelation. One Lord. That capital L-O-R-D. One Lord. Three entities. How? I don't know. And neither do you. Acts chapter 19 verse 2. Here's how I know it means one mode of, of baptism. And he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. You see, these were baptized into the baptism of John. John simply preached repent. He didn't preach the coming of the Spirit. He did talk about the coming of the Messiah. He didn't deal with the Holy Spirit. Christ did. So when they were baptized, they were baptized into the Messiah, into accepting Jesus. So when uh, Christ ascended and the apostles were going out after the day of Pentecost, after the upper room experience, they were saying, we are moving now under the power of the aegis of the Holy Spirit. Do you guys know about the Holy Spirit? We never even heard about the Holy Spirit. We don't know anything about the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, so they said to him, we have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, so into what then were you baptized? So they said into John's baptism, simply repentance for sin. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who should come after him. That is on Jesus. That was John's job. He was the forerunner of Jesus. His job was to highlight and lift up the name of Jesus. And that's what he did. So when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So this is a second baptism for them because they have been exposed to new light. Amen. Yeah, there were some people who I know who were baptized as children. Did it as children. And when they grew up and they became aware of all that God wanted, they were rebaptized into this new light. So this one baptism is not one time. It means one method of baptism. Amen? Because here we see at least two. Mark 9, 1, 9 and 10. It came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And immediately coming up from the water. Now let's stop there where that comma is. To come up from the water presupposes that you've gone down into the water. Amen? Amen. He saw the heavens, de heavens parting and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. So we see that the methodology for baptism as it comes from the hand of Jesus is immersion into the water. In fact, the Greek word baptizo means to immerse or to dip. So that lets out squirting with a fire hose. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That lets out rose petals. Mm -hmm. That lets out sprinkling, like holding the baby over the font and doing like this. You go down into the water and come up out of the water as a symbol of dying to sin and self and being reborn in Jesus. The symbolism is unmistakable. Death to sin, resurrection in Jesus Christ. Why are we hung up on the methodology? Because we want to do things as Jesus did. Amen? Christ is our example. And baptism is not a static exercise. 
it is symbolic of something that has gone on in your heart. Amen. Amen. It is a statement to the world. I'm turning my back on the world and I'm turning my face towards Jesus. I am stepping out of the world and into Christ. I am dying to the world and I'm being born again in Jesus. Now here's what baptism does not do. It does not, it does not make you a Christian. Yeah. It does not wash away your sins. Mm -mm. It's symbolic of it, but it doesn't do that. Blood of Christ washes away your sin. Amen. Amen. Baptism is a statement to the world that I have turned my back on the world and I've turned my heart towards Jesus. Amen. That's what, it's a statement. It's a statement. It means I'm changing teams. Amen. Amen. I'm going from the losing team to the winning team. Amen. Amen. That's what it is. It's a statement. The change in your life precedes baptism. Amen. That comes when you're converted. Amen. Remember that change in direction I talked about the other day? Yeah. yeah. That's got to precede baptism. If it does not, then you're going down a dry devil coming up a wet one. Amen. <laughs> Simon the leper, by the way, was cured by Jesus without a conversion. Um, I've got a sermon called The Case of Simon the Leper, Identified by Disease. Uh, because we call him Simon the Leper. He's got a name. It's not Simon the Leper. He's called Simon the Leper because he picked up leprosy. And he's having a party. So how does a person with leper, leprosy have a party? One, lepers couldn't own houses. Two, um, lepers had nothing to throw a party about. Three, if you're having a party and a leper gives you an hors d'oeuvre, you going to take your, an hors d'oeuvre from, from a person <laughs> with leprosy? So obviously, he's been healed from his leprosy. He is no longer Simon the leper. Yeah, but that's the one where when Mary does a little thing with her hair, it's Simon that says, hmm, if Christ knew who that was, he wouldn't let that woman touch him. So see, his heart has not changed. He's still a rat. My point is, my point is that baptism does not change you. The change precedes baptism. Baptism is a statement to the world that the change has come. Amen? Amen. Amen. And that's the important point here. Um, let me go on down the road. Romans 15, 4. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we may through patience and comfort <coughs> of the scriptures might find hope. So, they're written for our learning or our admonition. So, Romans is telling me here that when we get a methodology that's written in the word of God, it is written for our Admonition. In other words, do likewise. Amen? Do what you see done. Don't in, reinvent the wheel. Christ has told you and Christ has shown you what baptism is. Do it like Jesus did it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, let's go. Let's go to Acts. Acts chapter 8, 38 and 39. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. We're talking about Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water. Again, they're going down into the water. And he baptized him. Now when he came up out of the water, again, up out of the water, having gone down into the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away so that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went his way rejoicing. Of course, that was the beginning of Christianity in the country of Ethiopia, which has the record of being the longest country with the longest record of continuous Christianity with no break in the Western Hemisphere. Acts twenty two sixteen, And now why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord, which is why we baptize in the name of the Father and of his Son and of the Holy Ghost. Or Holy Spirit, which actually I like prefer, I prefer to the Holy Ghost. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, this is a symbolism again, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So it is a symbolism of a new life in Christ Jesus. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, 
certainly we shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. And that's what baptism does. Down into death, up into resurrection of Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have done what? Put on Christ. It's a symbol of putting on Jesus and walking with Jesus. I think I want to stop there with the text. Because everything in our lives is according to our faith. The Bible says in Romans, that which is not of faith is sin. So everything must be by faith. Let me tell you a story. 